Joining us now, the newest Laker face to the IG, that's right, Instagram world. And of course, our favorite here at Spectrum Sportsnet, Jared Dudley. As always, thanks for taking the time, Duds. I'm glad we're talking. Now it's, uh, what, a month later? Stuff changed a little bit. We're still quarantined, stay home order, but uh, we're getting there. My beard's getting bigger. I was going to say, so. we actually have a lot to talk about. You say a little bit has changed. I feel like a lot has changed from the basketball side, uh, the fact that you are in the Instagram world uh, space yes. now, fresh off an IG interview, actually, live uh, with another Laker, Dwight Howard. We'll talk all about that in a moment. Uh, first, just touching base, everyone okay, still okay, healthy uh, in the <clears throat> Dudley household? Everyone's healthy. Everyone's a little anxious, but everyone's fine, man. Everyone has been good, good family bonding. We, we were getting closer by the day. And to be honest with you, they haven't got on my nerves too bad. So we're still here. Everything's good. <laughs> the real question is, have you got on your wife's nerves? 1,000%. 1,000%. And is she still, is the percentage still her teacher 100%? You still zero? Uh, it, it went to 90-10 because the internet outlet, uh, connection went out in my house so I had to go over to my best friend's house who <laughs> lives down the block so I took all the kids over I did fall asleep one day and my uh, my friend took over but uh, overall it's been good though you were super dad in that moment <clears throat> oh yes. that's amazing glad to know everyone is doing well uh, let's dive right in because it has been a few weeks since we last spoke to you and a lot has changed when it comes to mm -hmm. the basketball space and what's going on in this world with COVID-19 uh, first mm -hmm. and foremost if anyone follows you on social media especially Twitter we know where you stand on this but Kind of let us in on how you're feeling about the NBA returning and your want and desire, of course, after health and safety comes first uh, for that to happen. Well, well let's, let's just be honest. They say that uh, a vaccine is not going to come out to about like, 18 months. So no matter what, next year during an NBA season, if we start on time or we start in December, there's going to be no vaccine. So when it comes to vaccine, that having that safety-wise, you're going to be fanless if you have a season. Now the second approach is, can you play and be safe enough to, you know, to guarantee people to not be able to potentially have, you know, loss, you know, dying or getting fatally sick. And the NBA believes with the amount of testing they can do in a month or two, when it comes more available to not only everybody in society, but to their players, that the data will show that the ages between 19 and 35 of players, you know, the mortality rate in the U.S. is 0.0001% and then even less for professional athletes. And so if they come with this bubble in Orlando, which is most certainly going to happen because Disney is a number one partner of the NBA and is obviously in Orlando and then Vegas being a huge partner with the uh, Summer League, to be able to have that and put it in the bubble, have the cleaning crew from the hotel to, to the arena, your, your percentages go down dramatically. And so... I feel that there will be a season. I feel it will be announced in about three to four weeks, and I feel like we'll be playing games in the second week of July. There were reports that Adam Silver said he wanted to have an answer in two to four weeks uh, on what the NBA <clears throat> will do this season. With that said, you did have that response on Twitter, and a fan did respond to you in regards to the health and safety no matter what. Don't even take the chances. Yeah. So, Dudley, given all those facts that you just gave us and the education and the reading up that you have done yourself, which kudos to you, how important yeah. is it for this season, just this season alone, how important is it for the NBA to find a way to resume in your mind? I, I, think, it's, I think it's huge in, in different ways. For one, it's um, sports has been leading. You know, if it wasn't for Adam Silver, I don't think we'd have gotten shut down as fast as we did. He took the approach of, hey, once a player got it, he shut it down. And as you saw, society, we followed, everyone followed his suit. NCAA, jobs, and uh, even government followed his suit. And so I think now at a point is we would not do it if we, if we felt it really would jeopardize player safety. And I think that we feel that we can be safe enough that we'll, no one will have any tragic stories and that we can move forward and players will be getting tested. The testing will happen for players 10 times more than they have now. It will happen before every game. And if you get positive tests, then you're, you have to be quarantined for 14 days, even if you're asymptomatic. Um, and I also believe for society-wise, as you saw the last dance with Jordan when it comes to ratings and people be able to watch, I think that – I, I think sports is huge. I think especially Laker Nation, how, how big of fans' enjoyment and, and satisfaction you would have for them to be able to watch their Lakers or the Bulls or Boston and see LeBron and the Lakers potentially win a championship, I think it's big for us moving forward. And I think it's the new norm. As you saw, restaurants opening up, it's now 30%. You're doing social distancing in gyms. And so we have to find a way in this new norm of, of the world to be able to come together and play sports. Speaking of watching, I mean, let's just be honest. There was a time where we were all kind of 
thinking how weird it would be without fans. And now fans are like, we will stay in our house and we will right. watch sports. Just give us sports. Uh, that is how far we have come. But with that said, there were reports, of course, that the president of the Players Association, Chris Paul, held a phone call with other league superstars regarding this united front that they want to mm -hmm. get this done. First and foremost, how important was that to you? How big was that to see this notion come from those league superstars, number one? And then number two, how much kind of influence or how much of an influence will that have, do you think, when the league goes to file their final answer? Huge Coming influence. Players. It's a yeah. player's league. These are superstars who have made millions of dollars, but they also have been ingrained of going through lockouts, having children, being married. They come from all spectrum. A lot of people have uh, elderly in their house. So they're coming at it as a selfless position, not a selfish, oh, I want to make more money. Oh, I want to win a championship. No, like, hey, is it safe? Do you think that LeBron or AD is going to jeopardize their safety and health just to win a championship when it comes to people who are potentially dying? No, that's not the case. So uh, we will follow them. We understand because they are asking the appropriate questions. I've heard, you know, there's been reports of Kawhi asking, is it going to be a bubble? Can people, family join? Uh, Giannis has a newborn. Will, will he be able to see his newborn? So they're asking the right questions safety-wise of how do we do it safety first before we can get, get him into the logistics? Um, it, 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 it was also important for them to say that they, they want to play. They're willing to be able to sacrifice, be able to give time away from your family, time for that. And how do we make it happen so then they can basically be the head of the union and then trickle down the effects and let us know, hey, this is what's being said. This is what we are looking for. And if they meet those demands and they meet those requests of us coming together, then we should play a season. You've, of course, been in this league for a long time. And mm -hmm. so you have many good relationships across the league. When you look at those, I know leagues, everybody. I know everybody in the league. Everybody, I know. I'm. Not, I will not question that. Yes. Uh, when it comes to, of course, that phone call, it was the league superstars. So it's the players that obviously have something to play for when it comes to the playoffs this year. What are you feeling from players who their teams are at, already <laughs> out of the playoff race, and their desires and motivations for the season to return? And what are conversations like with you amongst other guys <clears throat> around the league right now regarding this? Uh, that's a great question because I've talked to more of the non-superstars, the, uh, the players that are on young, bad teams, because I played on those teams too. And a lot, you know, a good percentage of them was like, Jared, why should we come back? I, I can't make the playoffs. Um, you know, we, we have nothing to play for. And, I, and this is what I tell them. I said, for one is, you're right, we might go straight to playoffs. So for you to come there and get your two, three weeks training and practice, you're on stay on home orders anyway, gets you a way to be able to hang out, camaraderie, which is good. But the second thing is this. If we do not play and there is no season, that means the TV money from Disney and uh, ESPN, they don't have to pay that money. That money then gets taken away from the BRI, which is a basketball-related income, that sets the cap number. So if that money's not in there, the following season with no vaccine – and that money not being in there, that cap of being able to pay $120 million to pay for these players goes down almost in half, if not 40%. So that 120 now goes to, what, $70 million? And so now you have to form a Laker team, a Bulls team, a Phoenix Suns team under $70 million where everyone's salary gets cut in half. And so my thing is, hey, if for safety reasons, if they say, hey, we can't play this season, I'm on, I, I'll be the first one to understand it. But then what's the difference next season? Mm -hmm. There's no vaccine coming, guys. So we have to be able to do safety now. The same, same way this year as we will next year. So I tell them it's a financial ramifications. It's a league. And they could force a majeure, or, which means they can cancel the CBA and they'd make a whole new CBA starting up. As you saw, it just got extended to September. Like you said, and it's what we're seeing all across the world. It's a trickle-down right. effect. But lesson here, trust your leaders. Trust those, those league superstars that are going out and asking the right questions, as you mentioned, and putting yes. you guys in a position to ultimately succeed. Were you on that conference call last Friday with Michelle Roberts and, and Commissioner Silver? I was. When he said that this could be the greatest one challenge of all of our lives. It, uh, it, it is from a, from a player and obviously an organization standpoint. It's, it's what's the risk to reward. He, mm -hmm. he, he touched on the Disney uh, from 10 billion to six or 7 billion. He touched on player safety. He's someone in his voice. He wanted to have a season. He feels that in a month or two, not putting words into his mouth, but the testing, they'll have more data, more testing, to be able to see the numbers of how to be able to treat it where we're at society. And he feels that in that time, you, you will see how this virus is not as what it, was seen early on and you'll see how these, you know, these restrictions are going to be start lifted. Let me ask you one, one final question about this. Um, mm -hmm. When it comes to, you kind of just touched on it a moment ago, what happens 
if the season does return this year? What does that do for next season and the seasons to follow? Would uh -huh. you be a fan of the NBA calendar season changing to say a January through August and playing through summer if that is what needs to happen? I, I'm a fan of experience. I'm obviously experiencing that. So my thing is mm -hmm. next year, if we go to December and we go into summer and ratings are all time high and athletes have to give up their summer. Now it's easy for me to say, cause I'm towards the end of my career and not being around. <laughs> you don't have to so do it very long. <laughs> that, but I think that we are, it's a business. And so if the business model shows it's better to play and not compete with football, then let's do that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I'm not objecting. I don't think any player should, I think it's just change. And so maybe we start in December and we get done in July. And so maybe it shrinks to maybe the back-to-backs, the -back, but players, we can't have everything. We want a lot when we want, obviously, not to have four games and five nights. We want extended All-Star uh, All Star Weekend. But during a pandemic, there's certain stuff that we have to be able to change and give up. So I would be willing to give up my summers to be able to do the better for the league, for sure. Jared, thank you for your perspective on all of this. This is why we love having you on it. It's the epitome, and it's, of course, a reflection of you and what you're doing uh -huh. right now for this league uh, and for those who are really striving and motivated, just like we know from the Laker organization, to get this thing to return this year. Uh, let's go to the side when it comes to you personally. Yes. It's been a couple weeks. We've already said this. So what is the routine? What are the workouts looking like for you right now? I've gotten to more basketball stuff. Okay. I, I definitely get my shooting in. I definitely go to a, a private gym with one other person uh, where I can be able to get my shots where you have a cleaning crew in there before, a cleaning crew after. Um, and like I said, it's me and one other person, very similar to what's going to happen to the facilities in 12 weeks. So it went from more elliptical and more, uh, you know, treadmill in here to be able to now get some basketball workout. And so you you know the commissioner is going to make a, a, a decision here in the next, what, three to four weeks, or I think it was two to four, he said. So for me, it's starting to ramp up because mm -hmm. once you get to that two to four, then we'll have training camp. And so uh, we're getting my body worked on with one other person um, to be able to, you know, that's how you want to prevent injuries, taking care of your body, the stretching, the massage, the tissue work. So uh, I'm starting to ramp it up, and you, you always got to be prepared for anything that happens. Have you been told uh, or given an update on when the practice facility will open for you guys? As of yesterday, uh, there were reports that L.A. County could be shut down until August 1st. For sure, I did so, see that. And so you know what? We do have a uh, call coming up here shortly. I don't know when. Uh, I don't know if it's within the next 24 to 48 hours because we we're supposed to potentially open up on Saturday. Um, but for us, is it's all voluntary. This is all how you feel. There's no there's no pressure. We can, you can come in one day a week, five days a week. It's on you. Uh, they know we're pros. They know that we have family members, and so whatever you feel is best for you and your family. But I have not got the uh, the exact date because obviously with that county thing happening, I don't know how that affects us. But we're here to play by the rules, and hopefully. Uh, just wait it out, play the waiting game, and win at the end. You've always, I like that. You've always been one <laughs> um, to offer such good perspective when it comes to this team and the veteran professionalism that you guys possess. And so when we were talking to Frank the other day, he didn't <clears throat> feel like other teams being able to get into their practice facilities earlier than others would really give you guys that much of a disadvantage. Do you agree with that? You guys are handling your responsibilities. For one, to get in the practice facility, it's not an advantage. Like I said, but people don't know the rules. It's only you can only have one person on the court with you. Mm -hmm. He's got to wear gloves and a mask, like you're in the hospital. He's passing you. Got to be within 12 feet away. That's, that's all you have. So to be honest with you, people are actually getting more valuable work outside of practice facilities. So to me, is the practice facility is the pro quo perception to be able to get the routine and show that we're doing it the right way, and then each two weeks, three weeks, it eases to eventually, if you've got to have a season, we have to practice. Mm -hmm. We have to have some sort of body contact of touching and moving. So this is just the first step, as you saw in LA County, you open up what uh, curbside pickup, you do that and eventually they open up restaurants, 30%, same thing goes in the basketball world. Only four people in the gym, only one on the court, one of the rebounder, and each week or each two weeks, it'll start to open up even more when by hopefully in the next three weeks, our whole team's together. How much has the timeline in your head changed um, to where this team needs to be in a position and ready to compete if you guys do go straight to the to the playoffs now that it's been two plus months since the season? I always thought down. June 1st was the date. To me and Adam Server kind of on that meeting always said, hey, it could go to the second or third week of June. Mm -hmm. So that he kind of extended it where I thought June 1st was the hard date, either we're having a season or not. And it's, hey, I won't even lie to you. It's going to be difficult. We're an older team. I'm older. Bron's older. I don't care how if he looks like Superman. Your body and joints <laughs> don't lie when it comes to certain things. And so for me, it's 
you're right. And so even when we have practice or training camp, hey, we might have our Anthony Davis going every other day because we don't want to risk him getting five or seven straight practices and pull his hamstring or twist the ankle, certain stuff. So it's a body maintenance. And if we play four or five regular season games, once we get the outlook of how the schedule is, of if it is a regular season game straight to playoffs, then we can dictate how we're going to train and to be able to slowly, gradually bring them up through no injuries. With all due respect, you lost me at this team being an old team, and then you mentioned the beard. And so then it just made me want to ask, who has the better beard right now, you or LeBron? For one, when it comes to maintenance, <laughs> it's definitely me, okay? LeBron looks like Kimbo Slice back in the day, how his wide beard, is, hey, how he is. But you know what? <laughs> he empowers quarantines. Yeah, he, LeBron has to do more stuff politics-wise. I'll get a haircut. You know, everyone plays by certain rules than others. But <laughs> How long did it take beard. you to get that? Because that was not like that a couple weeks ago. A, a month. I'd say about a month. A month? A month? <laughs> yeah, maybe you know, four to five weeks. I actually cut it down. That's the funny thing. <laughs> You just saw me two days ago. <laughs> yeah, you got to look fresh on your IG lives right now. Hey, hey, you know that. Unless you're LeBron, then you can look however you want. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, what's the latest fun-wise in the Dudley household? Any new shows, movies, board games? Any challenges uh, that you've created for your kids? That is a great question. I'm trying to think of new uh, shows we've been watching. That is a great question. Obviously, you've been watching The Last huh? Dance. Man, y'all, the last dance, oh, for sure. It, it's, it's been weird about the last dance is my oldest daughter, who's not even in the sport, she's been watching with me. So, yeah, last oh, dance is awesome. on every every second. And it's just, you know, that's just, it's bigger than basketball. That's a global icon with Jordan. So, for sure, that one, um, it was my daughter's birthday. So, we had a little quarantine party here with the, the slides, getting in the pool. It's been, we've been in that pool more times now than we have all summer in the last two years. I mean, and we're the sun get, is shining. We're trying to get a little tan. <laughs> you got to soak it all in. <laughs> I mean, um, but, when it comes to the last dance, I got to ask, and I love that you're watching it with your daughter. That's incredible. Uh -huh. um, anything that has stood out to you that you maybe didn't know or that you have your favorite part about it? My favorite part was the last two episodes, seeing Jordan's mm -hmm. emotion and mm -hmm. how literally, like, you know, him being a bad teammate, how he got on guys. And my little perspective was Michael Jordan drafted me. He was the president of the Bobcats. And so I have a... Uh, a nice, cool relationship with him and how he talks and someone loving the game and to show you even now, 20 years later, getting emotional about how he played and how it was and how he led. And to be honest with you, leadership comes in all different ways. Uh, Kobe, LeBron, Jordan, uh, Steph Curry, Tim Duncan. You can win in all different ways, and this was the best way for him to win. And so for him, he now taking a little bit of flack on that, and you can see how emotional, like, listen, this is how I got it. So to see him have tears, Especially with the Jordan meme and how being so cautious he's supposed to be. I mean, I see that and I love the Robin one. I mean, Robin was a wild boy, Vegas. I wish we, we touched on him a little bit more. Carmen Electra, what he, he freaking beers. On, <laughs> I know, on, that on episode Harley, was way too short. <laughs> on Harley Davidson's hopping out after a game. Like, man, I feel like he's in a fantasy, fantasy world, man. It's hilarious. Um, hopping on a Harley Davidson, I say this on every show, but I don't care. Hopping on a Harley Davidson is one thing, but drinking a Miller Lite. A beer. <laughs> Does that takes it to a whole nother level? When you do that, then we know you have arrived. Hey, listen, <laughs> hey, the, the cigar smoking, beer drinking is such a totally different age because even Nash would have a beer once in a while. That was like, I mean, I haven't seen a beer in a locker room in forever. Oh, I know. It's, that's you know not what the it thing. is? Wine's the new beer now. It you is. see wine in a locker room. We, we, we done got bougie. That's how we are. Oh, bougie. Oh, one final point, then I'll let you get back to your family. Um, the IG world. I, I can't believe it took you this long, especially given your personality and how good you are and with the IG lives. How much have you loved it? Do you wish you didn't get on it? Because there are days Jared when it's like, Dudley oh. 10, follow me. Jared, Jared Dudley, Dudley 10, 10 on IG. You know, I got to plug myself on here on Spectrum, the best network here in all of LA. Jared <laughs> Dudley 10. Um, but to be honest with you, I don't know why I never did. You know what? I thought it was so late Because it's the game. scary. I thought I was so. I know I was. I was oh, it is scary, right? I thought I was so late in the game, and then not having followers, and eventually I'm in quarantine. And it really was Braun and AD talking about IG and hey, does what's your IG? Let me post you. And we did like a uh, his birthday. We had one for his 35th birthday, Halloween, and I was never involved in it, and I was out of the loop in convos. And then eventually, my alma mater, Boston College, asked me to go on IG live. And I didn't have IG, so I had to create one just to go on their live feed. And after a while, I was like, you know what? Let me go with you guys. Let me go with the Lakers. Let me do this. And then now I'm like, hey, let's try to make a career out of this. You're I'm unstoppable. I'm, listen, I'm going to be at a million before you guys know it. Listen, when I start giving away tickets and jerseys and brawn autographs, I'm using everybody up. Hey, listen, you've had Kuz, you've had Dwight. 
you've had Alex Caruso on. Yep. When are you going to get Braun or AD? That is, that is no, when no. your page will right. skyrocket. You know what? I got to, like, win in gambling and have them owe me <laughs> and be like, you know what? Listen, don't yes. pay me. Come on my IG live. Yes. It would be through the roof, wouldn't it? I mean, duds. What, what are you waiting on? That's the question. I'm waiting on this quarantine to get over. Is that your mom? I love your mom. I love your mom. She, I, I hear her. I hear her. <laughs> we'll it together. Mama Duds, you're the best. Jared Dudley, you are the best. Thank you so much, as always, for joining us. Anytime. We hope Thank this thing guys. gets back rocking and rolling. We know you yes. want it as well. Take care. See you soon.